Okay, um, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, je m'excuse, je, je ne parle non français. Je ne, ne, ne reconnaîtra <laughs> les, les mots formidables. Um, I don't remember many of the beautiful words I learned in high school. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, man. Oh, that's, yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm supposed to sing a song. Um, I, but I'm not a very good singer. Um, so, could you please help me sing? Yes. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, this is my wonderful assistant here, Johnny. Johnny, can we go to the chorus, please? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a very easy chorus. Okay. It's um. It's uh. That's it. Good. I want I want you guys to help me sing. You guys look like great singers in your languages. I, I think there's some very good singers. I know there's a very good singer right in the middle, just at the back there. Can you see? Professor Shin. He's <laughs> a great, great singer. Yeah, you oh, man. Okay, so this is the chorus, and I really want you guys to help me come in on where it says GIC. That's the start of the chorus, really. Can you see that? Okay, and it's, it's very easy. Maybe we can read it together one time. That's a good way to start. Can you help me read it from GIC? So GIC. It's the place to be. It's the place to be. It's the place to be. The Gukje Kodu Center. Gukje Kodu Center. It'll make your life better. It'll make your life better. Chase away your blues. Chase away your blues. With the GIC crew. With the GIC crew. You can join the tours. You can join the tours. And get the Kwangju news. And the Kwangju news. So, it sounds like this. It's a little bit sleepy, it's been a long week. Uh, I just had some kimchi kimbap, so I'm feeling much better now. Um, and, Thank you. 
That was Julian Warmington, uh, professor of English at Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, he's been here in Guangzhou uh, since uh, 2002, and he uh, wrote the, that's an original composition, the GIC song, uh, that he wrote for the 10th anniversary of the GIC and the 100th issue of the uh, Guangzhou News. So, always fun to sing the GIC song here. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome, to the G welcome to today's special GIC talk. 
My name is Bradley Weiss, a volunteer here at the Guangzhou International Center, and I am honored to represent the GIC and welcome our special guest uh, and be the host for today's talk by French Consul Ishwar Arnold Rock. Before we begin, I would ask that you would all please take a moment to make sure that your phones are turned off or switched to silent mode. Done? Great, thanks. Now, as a foreigner here in Korea, in case you couldn't tell, I'm not a native Korean, it has struck me from time to time when people in this country always address me in English, often before I've made it clear that I have the ability to speak the language. Now, granted, uh, the function of English as a global language does make it safe to assume that someone like me will be able to communicate in English even if it were not my native language. However, I've often thought about how other foreigners, particularly of European heritage, feel about always being assumed to be a speaker of English and likely an English teacher here in Korea. Today's speaker is here to talk about a segment of exactly that part of the non-native Anglophone foreigner population here in Korea the nearly 3,000 French people that currently reside here and the estimated 20,000 uh, annual French visitors whom he serves as consul at the French Embassy in Seoul. Um, consul Rock's background includes studying history at the Sorbonne in addition to uh, obtaining a master's in political science, political science there as well. Uh, he began his service uh, in the Foreign Affairs Ministry in 2002 and has, a rapid has had a rapid ascent through the ranks before attaining the position of consul at the French Embassy to Korea in 2011, a position he still presently occupies. Mr. Rock will also talk, sorry, consul Rock will also talk about the bonds between the two countries and what the future holds. Now, Please help me welcome today's speaker with a big round of applause. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks to the GIC crew for welcoming me today for your special talk. Uh, I just wanted to talk, as um, Bradley said, about French presence in South Korea. So Bradley mentioned the fact that there's 3,000 uh, French citizens in Korea, but that's a recent figure. Some 30 years ago, there were only uh, 500 French citizens. So that means there's been a huge increase of the number of French citizens who are living in Korea, who are learning Korean, who are married to Korean women or men, and that's an interesting point. Why people who come from France and get to know a country live uh, here in Guangzhou, or in Daegu, or in Daejeon, eat kimchi, eat kimpap. It's, uh, it's surprising. Um, we have something like 3,000 French citizens, but most of them live in Seoul. 60% uh, of them live in Seoul. That means four guys out of 10 know a Korea which is quite different from the capital. We have French citizens throughout the country, in Daejeon, in Daegu, in Guangzhou. There's some, could the French guys in Guangzhou stand up? So you can meet them. Congratulations. They are French and they love Guangzhou. Uh, we have French uh, citizens in Busan, in Ulsan, in Okpo, and in Goche nearly all the cities and my job as a council is to go and meet them to understand what is their daily life what is their expectations uh, how is it to be a foreigner in Korea um, you now Bradley spoke about the language most of the French citizens don't speak Korean they try to learn Korean and it's really difficult for us because the first time I came here in Korea, I didn't understand anything. When I took the cab, I just said, and I had the driver who said, and I was just completely struck by the language. That's one of the three hardships I've identified 
uh, during this, uh, uh, my presence here for the past two years, three hardships for French citizens. The first one is the language. The second one is uh, meeting other French people. Because, for example, uh, you can be in a city like Guangzhou and be five or six or seven guys, but you never see someone from the embassy coming down and meeting you. You never get to know the news that what's going on in Seoul at the French Cultural Center or the big events. So our job is to maintain a link, a bond between French citizens throughout the country and what's happening in our country. And the third hardship is job. Most of the French people I've come, to, I've come across are looking for jobs and they are wondering, I'm a graduate, what can I do to get a job in Korea? Should I learn Korean? Should I get a graduation in a Korean university? Should I get married to a Korean girl? Because it's easy to get a job if you get married to a wonderful Korean girl. Um, it's, it's very interesting because we're a small community compared to the US, compared to the Filipinos. We don't have specific bonds with Korea. Uh, does anyone have a clue of the beginning of diplomatic relations between France and Korea? Just give a date. No? Nobody has a clue? 1882. 1882. Somebody has revised there is a French guy. <laughs> That's normal. Uh, 18, so it's roughly 120 years of diplomatic relationships, but uh, we have never improved that relationship in order to understand deeply each other. For example, everyone knows Perry Baguettes. <laughs> Is it French? Does it sound French? Yeah, that's the thing. We are here to make France being known as a brand and as a culture in itself and not just as a caricature of what it is. And what is interesting is that Korea is attracting French people not only because of Psy and K-pop or Korean languages. Last week I was with the ambassador and we received a group of young freshmen who were learning Korean as a second language because in our scholar system you can follow up with the first language, which is generally English, and add up another language. And it's the first time we've seen juniors of 16, 17 years old making an investment in Korean, telling, I'm learning Korean because I would like to settle in Korea, to make my life in Korea, which is totally different. I mean, we don't have the history the US has with Korea. We don't have the history Japan has. With Korea, but people in France are getting interested in Korean literature, in Korean cinema, in uh, Korean arts. It's not just about Samsung now. Uh, and it has been one of the topic which was um, at the core of the visit of President Park in France. You know President Park made a European tour. She went to the UK, she met the Queen, she went to Belgium, she had chocolates, I guess, and she went to France. She visited Musée d'Orsay, but most important, she had a, a meeting with our president. And what came out from that meeting is that we must strengthen our bonds. For example, we are uh, thinking about easing and softening visa procedures, both for Koreans as well as for French citizens because we would like more Korean students to come to France. We would like more Korean businessmen to come and invest in us. But at the same time, we would like French people to come to Korea and stay in Korea for more than two or three years. Uh, do you have an idea of the number of Korean students who go and study in France? And nobody's talking. <laughs> I'm the only one talking. It's a talk. <laughs> it's not a speech. Nobody? Nobody has a figure? Roughly. How many Korean students in France? 200. More. <laughs> Two Definitely more. 2,000. 2,000. Somebody has again revised and copied my book. <laughs> and do you know what is the main field selected by those students? Art. Art. No. 
language was French, they come to say, I love you, je t'aime. <laughs> it's, they want more Korean students, not only in art fields, but in science, in engineering, in economics, in political science. It's, it's, uh, it's a challenge to attract Korean students and say, come to France, it's not just about cities, for example. Uh, it's not just about Paris. Can you quote me some French cities? Can you quote me any Paris. French city except Lyon. Paris? Lyon. Lyon. Marseille. Marseille. Nice. Nice. Strasbourg. Strasbourg. <laughs> That's for the sausages, right? <laughs> Has anybody been in France here? Just raise up your hand. Okay. So, what is your best souvenir from France? Souvenir? Yeah. What is the best memory, remembrance? Like the food, the language, language, the monuments, the climate, the weather? No? Art. Art. Seine River. Seine River. <laughs> it's interesting because. Makeup skill. Makeup skill. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> You're a Korean, a country in which a woman, per average, uses 19 makeup products per day. And beyond the reference, that, that's interesting. I have to write it on. <laughs> Apart from that, one of the key work of the council, as I said, is creating a link between France and its citizens. We French guys are very simple. We need a bottle of wine, cheese, bread, and French language. And we are quite nostalgic of all this in Korea. Take, for example, Korean food. French people in the beginning don't like Korean food. It's too spicy, it's too red, it's based with noodles and soup. And they, they open themselves to a foreign country. It's, it's very interesting to help French people make of Korea their home. That is the core principle of consular affairs. Wherever you live, it is your home. It may not be your mother tongue, it may not be your homeland, but it is the place that makes sense to you. And cons being consul is being at the help of people. That's the most important thing in my job. Um, now, talking about uh, visas and the main access that President Park explain to our president. We have three main priorities uh, with Korea. The first one, as I said, is visas and helping Korean students, businessmen, tourists to come to France. The second axis that has been defined is uh, economics, economical relations. We have huge brands settled here uh, and we would like to help them developing the brand, the products, and the market. Can, can you quote me any French brand here in Korea? Have you come across a French brand or French company that could be settled here? Apart from makeup and arts? No? There's a big advance here. There's some big companies here. There's one big company which is a joint venture with the Korean company. Somebody sees it? It's about cars. Peugeot. Peugeot. That's a real French one, but there's a joint venture, Korean French one. Samsung. Car. No, no, Samsung. It's one of the biggest French company in Korea. It's one of the biggest company that sends a huge number of Korean engineers in France to perfect themselves. Have you heard of any other French companies? Banks? No? Peugeot? Peugeot is, is a car brand, but no banks. Never heard of? Air France. Air France. How many years uh, Air France has been set in Korea? I guess. For how many years? How, many, how long? Five years? Ten years? More than 30 years? More than 30 years? 30 years. It has celebrated its 30 years. It's the only airline company that has maintained a continual, regular presence for 30 years. No other airline company has done that. That shows how deep is the bond between France 
and Korea. Now, talking about the last priority, it's the, I think it's the, the most important one. It's culture. Now, the young lady who stood up, Alban, is working at the Alliance Francaise, which is French Cultural Center, gives French language course and cultural activities. We have a top priority for the years 2015 and 2016. That's what we call in French, saison croisée. That means to say, cultural seasons. That is to say that for autumn 2015 and spring 2016, there will be huge cultural events between France and Korea. Art exhibit, movie exhibits, movie festivals, uh, representation, theaters. It's going to be the most important thing that has been done between France and Korea for the past 10 years. Um, why is culture so important? Because when you live in a country, it's important to know how your, the country works. The small mimics in daily life, the history of the place where you live. And it's... Um, it's a difficulty for us French people because we always talk about La Tour Eiffel, Le Sacré Coeur, Le Louvre, but it's, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond. I was at the French Cultural Center a few hours ago and I've seen books that I studied some 10 years ago in college. This is French culture. It's not just about Seine River. It's about all the buildings surrounding Seine River and the history of the people who own that building. And we hope that this saison croisée will be a mirror of the richness of Korean culture as well as the richness of French culture. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to speak now just briefly about some famous French people here in Korea. Oh. There's surely one, oh, I think you know. I forgot. <laughs> ah, it's a woman. Yes. Who knows Idadoshi? Idadoshi. Raise your hand. Who, who doesn't know Idadoshi? <laughs> She's famous. It's incredible. It, it's a success story, but it's how a young woman girl fell in love with Korea. And she, she fell in love. Is, uh, Korea is the IT industrial uh, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I forgot her name. Ida. 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 And it's impressive because she came here, she didn't know anything about Korea. She married a Korean man, she got two children, she speaks perfect and French Korean, and she considers herself as a Korean. My point is, I don't aim to be a Korean. We have three years assignment in foreign service, so I hope to be a chukum hankuk, and I hope to take a little of Korea when I go, but I, I would like our French people living in Korea to be as open-minded as Ida not to be clustered in, the food is too spicy, I don't understand the language, what the hell is this country about? It's not about this. Living in another country is opening your mind. Now, to speak about some private and funny jokes, um, what do you think, um, how would you define consular affairs? What's the job of a consul? Apart standing in front of you and talking nonsense. <laughs> Visa issue. Visa. Everybody talks about visa. <laughs> Wherever I go, I have, uh, I have a colleague who is the head of cultural section. He says, he is the visa guy. If you need a visa, you should come to him. But it's not only about visas. What does it mean, consular affairs? Because you Koreans also have a, a section of consular affairs at the Korean embassy in Paris. So what does it mean? Promoting cultural exchange. Not only, but what is the daily work of a council towards its community? Take care of French people. Yeah, what does it mean, take care? Because I'm not, I'm not taking them hand by hand. <laughs> I, I will talk to your people. Uh -huh. We do three kinds of things, like any other consular affairs, and this is like general knowledge. We deal with all paperwork regarding yourself as a citizen. That is, your passports, your IDs, wedding certificate, birth certificate, death certificate. Then we have security issues, which has been uh, at the head of the top, uh, top of the headlines uh, in March and April. 
the main priority of the council is to maintain the security of his citizens, here French citizens. So that means that I'm in charge of a mapping of the community with head, heads of sections which aims are to know the people and identify them in case there's a crisis. And that's worth for any kind of consular affairs. And the third part of my job is what I'm doing here. Meeting people, meeting French people, but also meeting Korean people. Because my job is to help French people live better in Korea. And if I want to do that, I must meet Koreans and understand how Koreans are organizing themselves. Um, I just wanted to end this brief talk, because I wanted to brief and not too complicated, about history. Uh, the first French people who came in Korea were priests, Catholic priests, mm -hmm. from a seminary, Mission Étrangère de Paris. And that shows uh, the uh, evolution of French presence in Korea. We started with a bunch, a handful of priests, and now we have varieties of profiles in the community. We have journalists, we have students, we have entrepreneurs. Uh, there's another, talking about entrepreneur, you have, there's another name you should know, is Benjamin Joanneau. He's a guy, he's a French guy who studied Latin and Greek. He came here to uh, teach Latin and Greek at the French school in the 80s, in the late 80s. He's been here for 20 years now. He speaks fluent Korean. He's opened three French restaurants. He has one bookshop, and he didn't know anything about Korea. We have uh, civil servants, as myself. We have priests. Do you know the? Do you know what's the profile of the average French member of the community? For example, how old is he? How old, by average, is the French community? Is it 40, 30, 20? 29. 29, that <laughs> 29 years old. One third, one French citizen out of three is under 18. That's a bunch of kids. That's a lot of schools. That's a lot of mayhem for me. Because they come and they babble when they come. <laughs> uh, we have started this history with Korea from a handful of priests to varieties of profil. And that's what I wanted you uh, to understand from my short talk. French presence in South Korea is no different from any other foreign presence or non-English speaking presence in Korea. It's about defining something that is special between a country that is ours and a country which is undiscovered, in my viewpoint, which is South Korea, but which should get to be more discovered and more known. Thank you very much.